DJ Pro sound setting tutorial. I'm DJ Spiegelspin, and we're gonna talk about it. DJ Pro makes it very easy for us to adjust the app to our own personal preferences by providing us with all of these very intuitive settings. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about the sound settings specifically. So if you look where I'm pointing my mouse, you see it's on the record over here. We're gonna press this middle button, and then we're gonna go down here to this settings symbol, all the way to the right down here, and we're gonna click it. And now we are in our settings menu, and we're gonna go down to sound. So it's audio device setup, general, DVS, and then sound. Sound is the one that we will be talking about today. So we're gonna click it, and then now we have all of these options. So the first one is going to be the cross fader curve. What this does uh, is it adjusts, it adjusts the sensitivity and it changes what happens when you slide the cross fader. So now it is set to default. So let's see what that does. What it's gonna do is it's gonna be a traditional crossfader in the sense that you would just slide it and if it's all the way to the left it's going to only play the left deck but if you sl as you fade it in it's going to raise the volume of the track in the in the next deck so the second deck and then in the middle it's going to have both songs playing at the exact same volume at full volume so this is the setting that it starts with and this is the setting that most people keep it at and it just makes sense that's the way it works but if you want to do different things like scratches and different genre mixing different genres such as hip-hop and other genres like that then you might want to adjust this crossfader curve and some uh, more high-end controllers and cdjs and mixers will have this setting right on the mixer so look out for that if you have one of those devices but let's go back over and then we're going to adjust. So it, default is just a simple slider, but now let's put it on cut and see what happens. So we got the scratch track playing on the right deck, and then we got nothing on the left deck. So let's move the crossfader slightly. And as soon as you move it, it's on full volume. So this is good for doing scratches such as the chirp scratch. So this is what it sounds like. And then now if we want to do the chirp scratch. We could use the cross fader like that. It's a little bit difficult. It's a little bit hard to do. If I was going to do the chirp scratch with this app, instead of adjusting the cross fader curve, all you have to do is move the crossfader to the left, set it back onto normal, back to default, and now you just hold your finger in the middle, and when you let go, it'll snap back. So have the crossfader set to off, and then hold your finger here, and you could do the chirp scratch. So baby scratch, then chirp scratch. and you could hear the chirp like that. So I don't suggest changing the crossfader curve, but if that's something you're used to doing and you're used to doing it on other apps, then go ahead, it is there for you. Next, we are going to go back to sound. The next one is EQ type. So we could have classic or isolator. So the difference between classic and isolator is isolator is going to isolator is going to change the way it it's hard to explain I'm going to show you guys so now if we have if we have it on classic and we turn down all of the EQs let me just get a sample track for you guys
When we turn down all the EQs, this is what it sounds like. You still hear some of the music. So it doesn't completely get rid of the song. Now if we go back over here to the sound setting, EQ type, isolator. You see, no sound is coming out at all in isolator. And then if we go over here, put it back on to classic, you still hear some of the music. So if your mixing style is you want to start a track with not, no sound at all and then gradually mix it in, you could use isolator for that. So this is what happens as we gradually raise these. And keep in mind, any knob or, or button on, in DJ Pro or slider can be used at the same time. So you, if you use all your fingers, you could change all of, all of them at the same time. So let's go back to Isolator and see what happens when we slowly turn up. So right now, it's on Isolator, no sound coming through. And if you look over here at your levels, you'll see that there's no sound coming out. Now we'll slowly go up. So it's hard to explain, but basically what Isolator does is it turns off all the sound if, if, all, the, if all the EQs are down. So test it out and see which one is better for you. I just keep it on standard. Classic mode. So now we're gonna to go to Neuromix EQ. So there's drums, harmonics, and vocals, or you could do drums, bass, and melodic. So that would be more for if you're doing songs that don't really have that many vocals. So you're not really using, if you wanna use DJ Pro to Neuromix to do mashups, to do make instant acapellas or instant instrumentals, then you're gonna use drum harmonics and vocals. But if you're gonna use it to do smooth mixes between songs that don't really have that much vocals and you're not concerned about the vocals, then you could do drum, bass, and melodic. I tend to play a lot of songs that have vocals. I like playing pop music and stuff like that. So I keep it on drums, harmonics, and vocals. Next is going to be filter resonance. This is the sound you get from the filter. So we're gonna go over here. This is the filter. So what the filter does, I made a video specifically on the filters, but basically what it does is if you have the high pass filter, if you put it all the way up to high pass filter, it's gonna take out most of the bass. So it's just like it's just like lowering this bass knob, but then you get that resonance sound, that that whooshing sound if you listen. which could be great for mixing. A lot of songs already have filters in them, so you could do really good blends by using this filter. And now that was on high, so let's see what it sounds like on low. Filter resonance, low. So you still get that resonance sound, you still get that wishing sound, but it's much lower. So if you wanna just use the filter um, as an alternative bass knob, then you, I would suggest keeping it at low. If you like having that whooshing sound and that effect going, then keep it on high like I do. So I am going to keep that on high. Now we go over here to FX routing. These are to do with the effects. So post fader means that after you cut the volume of one track, it'll still be playing the effect. So we're gonna go over here to effect, and the best example for this one is to use an echo. So we're just going the regular echo, and now we're gonna put the echo on, and then we're gonna cut the volume slider here. So echo on, volume slider down. So there, you saw that when there's no volume at all, and you turn the slider all the way down, you still hear that echo. And that's great for doing echo out transitions, still having something playing so you could blend in the next song. So the next, so your other option, what you could do, go back to sound, is you could do pre-fader. So now we're gonna play the song, 
put the effect on and lower the volume, see what happens. And as soon as you turn the slider down, the effect is gone. I don't know why you would want to use this, I guess if that's your style of DJing. For me, I always use the echo in post fader to do echo outs, and that's how I like to DJ. So I would recommend keeping it on post fader. Now these ones, I'm not gonna spend too much time on, but the audio limiter, it prevents clipping and distorting of the audio sim signal. So it, when you're DJing, especially on big speakers and stuff, if you turn the bass up too high, if you turn the volume up too high, you could damage the speakers or you could just get really poor audio. So this setting just limits it so you can't play the song too loud. And the next one is auto gain. This one is very important because if you look over here, if we go to our EQ, so you press this EQ button here. Well, you don't even have to press it. This is our gain, the smallest button, most overlooked knob in the app they didn't design the app for you to adjust the gain a lot of old school djs or people that have been djing on cdjs and records and stuff like that would are used to having their eqs being bass mids highs and then gains the regular same size knobs dj pro has one of the best auto gains so i would 100 percent suggest just keeping it on auto game you got enough stuff to worry about just don't worry about the gain. It does a great job of adjusting the gain. And what the gain does, it's not a volumes knob. What it does is it raises the frequency of the song and it will, it could make the song a little bit distorted, but some songs are recorded at different volumes. So during your DJ set, you wanna have a consistency of your volumes. So DJs would, would traditionally adjust the gains of each track to do this but the app does it for us. If you look over here, it when you load up a track, if you saw that, look down there, it's hard to see, but down there, it's gonna adjust the gain. See how it raised the gain, it lowered the gain. It is one of the best apps at doing this. That's one of the best features that it has, so I definitely suggest using it. And then the, the next one is output head headroom. It just reduces output levels to avoid clipping again. Another thing to protect your speakers and pr protect your set from having poor quality audio. And then this one is very important too. Auto select pre queuing So if you look over, if you look over here, well actually, let's go to pro mode. You actually have to plug in your controller to see this, I believe, because there is no section for a headphone. But what it does is when you're using a controller, like this controller here, you see these headphone symbols? They're gonna light up. So when the crossfader is on one side, the headphones are gonna be on the other side. So this crossfader is playing this deck, so music is going out of this deck, is playing live but this one is not. So it automatically knows to uh, to switch the headphones. So which track you're gonna be listening to on the headphones for pre-queuing. Pre so having it automatically do that with controllers like this that don't have that many buttons or sliders, you could use these headphone buttons as uh, effect buttons and use them for other features so you could get more out of a small controller. So I definitely suggest using this feature. It automatically starts with it selected, so I would suggest just keeping it. So let me know in the comments how you use the sound settings, if you agree with me, if you don't, if you have any specific questions about about anything with DJ Pro or DJ on the iPad, feel free to ask. And I make DJ videos every day, so subscribe to the channel. Thank you.